Hi guys, how's it? Welcome back to my Afrikaans-speaking followers. Howdy to everyone else. Man, I have to start out by saying the obvious, man. Uh, the attacks on my channel, uh, my TikTok this week, um, and I've come to find out these were not isolated. A couple of other content creators also had massive attacks, of course, the, the R word being thrown at every single one of us uh, for questioning uh, certain things about uh, opposing teams. Uh, and I don't think racism has anything to do with it. It's just a simple question of why do you have foreign born so many foreign born players on your team? And you guys coming to the defense of me, like you guys don't know me from Tom Dick or Jane down the street. And I do appreciate the support that I get from you guys. It does mean a lot, man. Like, you will know of anything you'll notice. There are certain subjects that never come up on my page. I never talk about politics. I never talk about religion because, well, once upon a time, you didn't talk about those things to strangers. And I just don't find them to be very entertaining either. And you guys, you know, you guys defended me. And I, I really, really appreciate every single bit of the support you guys have given me. Um, and it, it does mean, it means heaps to me, man. Uh, I do appreciate every single bit of it. And I, I can't tell you guys, thank you enough. Bye a donkey to all you guys in South Africa that speak Afrikaans and thank you to everyone else, man. I really, really do appreciate the support you guys have given me. Um, it's been, um, I've had to kind of spit my venom out a little bit. You guys have seen some of the videos where I've kind of just fought back and said, Hey, no, you're not shutting me down on this. This is not, no, this is not how this ends. And I, you know, have kept a very DIY ethic about this whole thing. Um, there has been offers of sponsorship that I have turned down because I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because I love this game and not just the spring box, but the game as a whole. Now, will there become a time where I am monetizing? Of course there is. Everyone does. But, like, I just want you guys to know that, like, this is just a dude. Like, I'm just a guy. There's no corporation. There's none of this, man. I'm doing this in an office, in a spare bedroom that I call my office in my house. And I, I really do appreciate all the support I get from you guys. Because this is really... You guys go do this if you want. Like, this is how I got into it, man. I had some support from some other content creators, guys like Gareth Mason, rest in peace. I always bring him up, Two Cents, Mark from Two Cents Rugby, all those guys. I had support from those guys that say, hey, go do it. Give it a shot. And I've always kept a very DIY ethic about all of this. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the final pool game for our spring box, but all the other teams as well. And I'll let you guys see my picks for what I think the scores will be. And you guys can kind of leave it in the comments as far as where you think I am, whether you think I'm absolutely stupid or talking cock or whatever. Sometimes, you know, hey, I was dead on uh, the first couple of games and I've, I've, I won't tell you where my super brew is. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm not really the best at it, but it's fun anyways. But first game, we will have a Wednesday game once again this week. We will have uh, two winless teams, uh, not without trying. We will have Uruguay, who, you know, put a bit of scare into France. And the consensus worst team in this entire competition, and that would be the Belvicius of Namibia. Now, I do have a bit of a dog in the fight when it comes to Namibia. Uh, he will be coming off the bench in relief this week. Adrian Boyson, yes, the guy that... Uh, the All Blacks red card was against for the, the shoulder charge. Uh, Adrian Boyson actually does play for our local Major League Rugby franchise, the Dallas Jackals. I am actually the president. I'm sure you guys have seen it on there. I've mentioned I'm the president of the Jackal Den, which is the fan club of the Dallas Jackals. And Adrian is a super, super nice guy. Um, you know, every time they take the field, they have a chance to make history. They've never won a World Cup game. And there's been a lot of talk online about what can we do to help that and that kind of thing. And I, I don't really know the answer. Um, like I said, uh, Major League Rugby has quite a few uh, of the Valichias playing here. I think it was like five. And uh, I know I met Damian Stevens. He is the starting fly, uh, scrum half. It says he's 5'9". That dude's like 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, I'm taller than him. I'm 5'7". <laughs> 
He is not 5'9". Super nice guy, but yeah, it's obvious. Um, Vion Conradi, who was a flanker for them as well, he was actually one of the he was the forward of the year for Major League Rugby. But none of this success is translating over to the, the the World Cup, obviously. But you know, every time they take the field, they have a chance to make history. But unfortunately, I have gone with Uruguay as a thirty point favorite over them. Yeah, it is what it is, guys. Um, then next up we have, uh, a former tier two, now a tier one, uh, taking on Samoa, Japan, the brave blossoms of Japan taking on Samoa. Um, I think, uh, no more Lima Sapawanga, I guess the injury, I guess the losing the T thing, that was kind of it for him. Uh, I have picked Japan as a 16 point favorite over Samoa. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to argue with me on that one. Then we get to the next game, Friday, the 29th of September. And before we get to that pick, I, I just want to bring up uh, a very... Uh, we, we just passed the eight-year anniversary of uh, a game that will live in infamy for Springbok fans. And, uh, you know, there's some pretty bad ones in our history. The 57-0 shellacking to the All Blacks was a pretty bad one. But this one was so big that they made a movie about it and you all I'm talking about. Yes. The Brighton beach miracle, uh, Japan beating South Africa 34 to 32, uh, in the opening pool game that year, the 2015 rugby world cup. Like I said, a movie, uh, an incident so big that Tamura Morrison, the Kiwi actor portrayed Eddie Jones, uh, and they made a movie about it. 32 to 34, the brave blossoms with the win. And with all that's going on with Australia right now, it, yeah, I, I I didn't post anything about the prediction, but I could go back to WhatsApp conversations from three and four months ago where I predicted this is what was going to happen, that Eddie Jones was going, it was a temporary thing coming to Australia. His career will end in Japan. But with that being said, with the next pick, the Friday game uh, in Lyon, France, we haven't had a Brighton Beach miracle yet. We had one in the 2019 World Cup when Uruguay beat Fiji. That was the Brighton Beach. I think possibly you might think I'm absolutely crazy and like, look, I I'm not telling you to put money on any of this. But I think we might see another Brighton Beach miracle on Friday. I have picked Italy to win by two points. Probably not the, the best pick. It is an upset pick. But uh, we haven't had a big one yet in this World Cup, and there always seems to be one every year. And I think that could possibly be it. Is it going to happen? Probably not, but I'm just picking Italy. It's a throwaway pick. I'm not betting any money on this, but hey, what if Italy did beat the All Blacks and eliminate them from the World Cup? <laughs> hey, stranger things have happened. Nobody picked Japan. They had like an abysmal World Cup record when they beat, beat the Springboks. Uruguay had an abysmal World Cup record, and they beat PG. So, that being said, yes, I have picked the All Blacks negative two. I got Italy by two over the All Blacks. Next game we will come up to is Saturday, September the 30th. Got a couple of games that day. We have the two South American teams facing off each against each other, a team that has qualified for every Rugby World Cup, any team that has qualified, this is their very first and only Rugby World Cup, and that would be the Condores of Chile versus Los Pumas of Argentina. Uh, another guy I have a little bit of a tie with, Augusto Bohm, the hooker for the Chilean squad, also played for the Dallas Jackals in their inaugural season. First and only Chilean rugby player I've ever met. I did message him the night they qualified and told him congratulations, and he said it was the greatest feeling. This is the game that the Chileans have really, really circled on their schedule to face off against the big boys in their continent, the team that they look up to the most. And um, unfortunately, I do think it's going to be an easy day for the Pumas. I have them as 40-point favorites over, over the Condores de Chile. Next game up, we have two Tier 2 teams and one kind of moving in the Tier 1 direction, one that was kind of moving in that direction, maybe not so much anymore, 
and that would be the Fijians versus the Georgians. I have picked Fiji with a 12-point favorite. I know that's probably a little bit of an unsafe bet, but it's what I'm going with, guys. So Fiji by 12 at least. Then we get to another Pool B matchup this weekend, a Pool B matchup this weekend, as we have got Scotland versus Romania. Um Scotland kind of in a do or die kind of situation, but like any loss and they are done. And I have picked Scotland by 44. I don't think they're going to put up 76 like we did. No, I just, I just don't see it there. Like they've got some talent, but I don't think they have 76 points in talent. So I've given them a 44 point de- uh, plus deficit to uh, the Romanians by, so they will win by at least 44 points. Then we have the final pool match, I believe, for Eddie Jones as a Wallabies coach, more than likely, uh, as they will match up on Sunday morning against Portugal. Now, I've seen some pundits kind of saying, like, uh, Wallabies by 20, Wallabies by 30. Um, This is a broken Wallabies team. I'm only giving them 12 points over Portugal. And I think Portugal keeps it entertaining for about the first 45, 50 minutes of the game. When their bench comes on, that's when it becomes a different show, story. But I've only got Australia winning by 12. Yeah, poor guys. And then for the final game of the pool for our mighty spring box, as we will be taking on the mighty, I call them mighty to Itali Tahi. We're talking about 2007, man. We remember that pool game and how they they backed us into a corner, man. Uh, Andre Pretorius, who was the fly half for the Springboks in that game, just had kicking issues. You had Nili Latu, the Tongan Torpedo. He was looking good. Pino Hege, the lock. I mean, everybody, everybody's Epi Tayoni. Finn Almaka. Like, we remember that 2007 Tonga squad because they were that friggin' good. If there was ever a team that deserved to advance that didn't advance, I kind of feel like that's one of them. If they were that friggin' good. But it was a depth thing. Once their bench came on, it, it was just, you could tell. They did get uh, their Brighton Beach miracle in 2011 when they did take down France. Yeah. So they did get theirs. That was the 2011 Brighton Beach miracle. And, um, Got no disrespect. They're not Romania. I don't think we're going to put 70 up on them. I think we're going to beat them by at least 40 points. That's what I have decided. It's a safe bet. Um, We do know that we are getting the services of one Mr. Andre Pollard again this weekend. We don't know whether he'll start. We don't know if he'll come off the bench. Um, Hype of the personal belief. Slot him in at 12. Or slot them in at 13. Many Libox distribution of the ball cannot be ignored. He runs the offense very well. He just cannot kick. Let Andre play at 13. Dialende at 12. He'll do all the heavy hitting. Andre can play defense. He can read the field. You have him in the back with Damian Falemsa, Kurt Lee. That's two guys that can kick very, very well with Damien and Andre. And you've got the speed with Damien in the back. He he loves to run the ball. So does Kurt Lee. If he does play um Kurt Lee, if he does play at 14 in that game. I just think um I mean I with it being Tonga, yeah, I would even start Andre at 10 or bring him in at 10. Uh, you know, have Manny start the game and have Andre come in at maybe like the 50th minute just to get his feet, his legs warm. I don't want Manny LeBoc to not play fly half, but we'll get into that when the lineups are announced. But uh, you guys let me know what your picks are. If you agree with some of my picks, if you don't, if you think I'm a bleeding idiot, let me know. Um, but like I said, once again, guys, Thank you for the continued support. Thank you for like, you know, don't back down, man. Like, and I, you know, I have that attitude, but I don't really want to piss everybody off. But when you have like trolls and like, I, I, we've all had to deal with it, man. I mean, my personal opinion when it comes to trolls are these are the kind of people that when you see them in person, they say 
fuck all. They say nothing because I've had that incident in the last year of my life. They will. They're the kind of people that do this clickety click click on a keyboard. But when you see them in person, they say fuck all. They say nothing. And I know that's what a lot of these guys are. You want to call me a racist for that shit? That's I'm sorry if you think that's racism. Now, if you want to call me a stupid American or a dumb yank, my response to that is, and I know this sounds a bit like an arsehole response, but I'm sorry I can't hear you over my independent financial freedom afforded to me as a middle class person. Sorry, not sorry. Like, if, if you want to attack me for being American, I mean, I, I don't really think that's like, you know, I know we don't have the best view in the world, but I'm pretty sure I probably live a lot better standard on my dime than you do. Especially if you're in Ireland or the or Great Britain as a whole. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I probably live a bit better of a standard than you do. But I noticed that they'll say that but I very rarely get that from South Africans, Kiwis, Aussies. I never get like, you're a stupid, dumb American because, well, you guys have a, a bit more sense than that. I, guess. I mean, yeah, it is what it is, but I will see you guys in a couple of days when lineups get announced. This is going to be a good one. It's going to be a proper game to finish out this pool. We'll have 13, 14 days off to recoup. We'll know hopefully by the end of this weekend, who we're going to be playing. In the quarterfinal, as we begin our march back to taking the cup back home where it belongs, which is to South Africa and south of the equator. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Be safe.